Welcome, everybody. This is Bob Hollis with Mobius Intelligent Systems here on behalf of California Capital. And uh, to get started here, I'd like to introduce Sarah to say a couple words about California Capital and the services they offer. And then we'll get into the webinar from there. Welcome, Sarah. Hi, thank you. Thank you so much, Bob. Um, as Bob mentioned, my name is Sarah Harding. I am the program manager at California Capital Women's Business Center, and I wanted to um, come on here this morning and thank you for joining us, whether you, you know, maybe this is your first webinar with California Capital, um, or maybe you've attended before uh, when we were in our office, or maybe you've joined us in the last year on one of our previous webinars. Either way, I just wanted to thank you um, for spending some time with us this Thursday morning. And um, I wanted to quickly share some of the uh, resources that California Capital offers for our um, clients. So uh, first is the Women's Business Center. We are one of 16 women's business centers in California. Um, we were at 13 and we were able to expand to 16 last year. So that's really exciting. Um, and so we have Women's Business Center offers trainings such as these. Um, we are funded by the SBA, federally funded by the SBA. So we are able to put on webinars like this. Um, um, at no cost. And then uh, Women's Business Center also offers business counseling. So if you are um maybe brand new entrepreneur and you are like, what the heck do I do next? Um, you know, help, then you can schedule to meet virtually with one of our business counselors. We've grown from one business counselor to three. So the three of them handle all of our clients and I truly don't know how they do it. Um, I don't think they sleep. Um, they are phenomenal. And so if you're again, brand new entrepreneur and maybe you have a business plan and you're like, okay, now what? Um, they can sit down with you, meet you where you're at um, in your journey. Or if you or maybe not seasoned, or maybe you are a seasoned entrepreneur and you are stuck. Um, you're looking for guidance. You know, how do I pivot? Do I go left or do I go right? Uh, they can sit down with you and meet with you um, virtually, of course, and help you figure out what's the next best step for your journey. Um, if that's something that you're interested in, then I can put a link um, in the chat and if you can click there to sign up as a Women's Business Center client. Um, I do want to note that we are not only um assisting women we help anyone that comes through our doors so um, we try to get that word out there as much as possible um, we're trying to figure out how to make it um, a little less misleading because we know that sometimes um you know males come across our our website and maybe don't even rec uh, and consider uh inquiring with us because they see women's business center so right away you know they they go to the next um Thing they find on Google. So we're trying to incorporate that we help absolutely anybody that comes to us. Um, we just happen to be one of the women's business centers in California. Um, and so next we have our Procurement Technical Assistance Center. Um, for short, we say PTAC and they are all about government contracting, government bidding. Um, if you'd like to register your business as woman owned or minority owned or veteran owned, they can help you with that entire process from start to finish. Uh, we know, you know, dealing a lot with the government is in exactly a walk in the park so they can guide you um, how to file where to file the whole nine yards um, oftentimes clients also ha will have a business counselor and then maybe it's time for them to register their business as minority owned or veteran owned or they decide they want to go for government contracting then they we can switch you over to a ptac counselor so you're absolutely more than welcome to have you know a, one of our business counselors general business counselors first and then maybe you need a ptac counselor or vice versa um, we're, op we're open to helping you at wherever you're at in your journey so that's definitely um, allowed to you can have a counselor in both areas um, and last but not least, I wanted to mention our, our lending department. So uh, last spring when COVID hit, um, it completely took off. Um, we've always had a lending department, but you know, as you can imagine, the demand for access to capital came in um, in floods. And so we, we have a chief lending officer now. Her name is Judy Fletcher, and she uh, runs her whole team. And again, I don't think they sleep. I don't know how they do it, but they are phenomenal and they um, help our clients um get access to capital they've created their whole entire intake process um to see you know about where you might be and whether you are looking for you know access to capital for five hundred dollars five thousand dollars or five hundred thousand um, dollars they can help you with uh, one of our programs they can guide you um on you know what the state of california is offering and so if that's something you're interested in, i can also put a link to that in the chat um 
And just, we're here for you guys um, as small business owners, as entrepreneurs. Um, one quick thing I did want to mention is if you are a brand new entrepreneur or you're, um, you're looking for more guidance in maybe um, your business plan, we have Dream Builder on our website. And that is basically a 13 module program that will um, walk you through all the steps to creating a business plan. So 13 modules sounds daunting, it's not. Um, it's self, it's guided, um, there's a guide in there, she'll walk you through each a module and kind of assist you and you know this is kind of ideas that you put here and this is how you fill this section out then once you're done filling it out um, it will formulate a business plan for you at the end you can you know take that out you can print it you can send it to your business counselor or whoever might be helping you with this process and you guys can go from there it's a wonderful starting point uh, we send all of our clients to that platform if they come to us and you know they don't have a business plan or it's their ideas only in their head they need to get it on paper um, um, we send them all there. So if that's something you're interested in, um, I can also put a link to that in the chat. I'll put my contact information as well. Please reach out to me if you have any questions. And um, with that being said, I'd like to hand the floor back over to you, Bob. Thank you, Sarah. That was a wonderful orientation to all the great resources at California Capital. And I can attest to the years I've been working with you that every single person I've talked to uh, who comes over there absolutely loves the organization. I've never heard one negative word. And uh, you make a lot of people very happy and successful. So thank you for that. Okay. So with that, we'll uh, move into the presentation uh, portion of our webinar. Again, I'm uh, Bob Hollis, I've taught quite a few courses over there uh, at California Capital on things ranging from technology to business and marketing, uh, social media integration. And today we're here to talk about e-commerce. Um, it's very timely, obviously, with what's going on in the world and a lot of uh, brick and mortars being unable to serve their regular customer base in the way they've done it traditionally. Uh, but sometimes that's just what we need. You know, they say necessity is the mother of invention. And Sarah and I were just talking about how I took my first business ventures online uh, more than 20 years ago and was able to operate all around the country. And uh, it was a different firm, but I started it from scratch with no money, credit card debt, two young kids and no connections. <laughs> but I got it off the ground and within three years, we were the largest in our industry uh, across the country uh, in particular niches. So it can be done. We're here to help you do it. and. Uh, be here to support your success the whole way. So uh, what we're talking about today is how to get your brick and mortar business over to e-commerce. And even if you don't have a brick and mortar business, but you are uh, looking for a way to make some money off the web and be able to work from home and uh, live a, a good quality life and make a good income, uh, this course should take you a long way to get there, this workshop. Uh, obviously with the kind of depth this can go to, which is, uh, pretty much unlimited, which is why I love technology. You, you never get bored and never run out of things to learn. And there's always something new right around the corner. So what I try to do in these workshops is not uh, have you walk away with a complete product ready to go, turnkey, you know, let's put out the sign and start business tomorrow. But I want to introduce you to a broad array of resources and things that you can use to get your business off the ground uh, and take it to the next step or next level and get online. And from the things you're learning in this course or this workshop, uh, you should literally be able to do that in, in like a day. So if you took what we go through here and decided over the weekend that you're gonna get online and have something going by Monday morning, it is absolutely possible. And if you think about uh, some of the small businesses around the country that are you know, on, on little main streets and little towns, and now nobody can walk in and out of those shops, but they don't have any presence online. Uh, those are the people that are getting into a lot of trouble right now. So what we've got is, uh, here's our agenda. And all of these materials, everything you see here, uh, this is a spreadsheet that's a Google Sheet. I've got several tabs here on the bottom that we're gonna go through. Uh, but this is all available to you as well. And I put it on a website that you have access to and I'll send out the link and make sure everybody uh, can use that before we end the webinar today. Uh, but I did it as a Google Sheet because I embed this into one of our California Capital course sites. And in the process of doing that, uh, I, I might come through and update things at times as things change. And this way it will 
Oh, somebody says, uh, do not have audio. Um, uh, that's a question that's come in. If you don't have audio, check your settings on your computer and, and check settings in and um, go to webinar in your sound settings. Go to the audio tab in your panel and you should see a way there to check uh, which audio you're using and then test it uh, using the COG. So that should help you. So today our agenda is a little bit on, on my background. Uh, we're gonna go through a little bit of the history and growth of e-commerce just to understand why it's so important. We're gonna talk about some of the different e-commerce platforms, uh, some of those that are very accessible such as Amazon, eBay, Etsy, Wix, uh, Squarespace, Shopify, and then uh, WordPress.com. And we're gonna spend more time on WordPress.org and you'll understand why by the time we get there. And then also talk about different ways to, uh, to use website monetization. So overall, it's not about just looking at uh, what you're selling, but what else you can do with your website once you've got traffic going to it uh, to further monetize that without direct sales. And then we'll talk a little bit about marketing and social media and leave some time at the end for Q&A. And I, I recommend uh, entering questions as they come to mind throughout the webinar to make sure that we cover them. And you might have something that you think of early on uh, that we cover later, but if not, you don't wanna lose track of that question. So go ahead and enter it as it comes to mind in your go-to webinar panel, and we'll make sure we cover all the questions by the end of the session. If by chance we get too many, uh, to finish in time, I'll make sure I get to everybody one-on-one -on -one, uh, to get back with you to, uh, for, with answers uh, on whatever questions you might have. So e-commerce, uh, this is a link that I'm gonna send out to everybody. This uh, might look familiar. This is not stealing the California Capital uh, theme and logo for my own purposes. This is a website I put up for one of our, our tech classes where we were teaching website development and it's called a, a WordPress multi-site. So you can actually have one installation of WordPress and do unlimited websites off that one installation. I mean, literally thousands of them uh, and basically create your own WordPress.com platform. So we'll talk about why that can be useful in an e-commerce environment in a little while. But the most important thing for now is I'm gonna send you this link also in our chat and you can uh, bookmark that and come back to it later because this is where all the resources of the class will be stored. And as I showed you the, uh, the spreadsheet uh, just a minute ago here, you'll notice down on the bottom when you look at it as a Google sheet, you've got different tabs. So we've got our agenda, and this is just a rough estimate. Uh, we won't stick precisely to that. We also have a tab for platforms. And here are the platforms that we'll be discussing. I put a, a row with some of the costs and then also links so you can get into them deeper and some of the uh, some of the mail options that we'll talk about as well as uh, WooCommerce. We also have a tab here that is what most interests people it seems in the other classes. And this is other ways to monetize the website. So that's the third, third uh, tab down here. And we're gonna go through all these a little bit when we get to that section of the presentation. And then, I'll be showing some uh, screenshots and things from some websites. So I started adding some of the uh, some of the links here for those sources. And as more come to mind, again, I'll be building on this not even just today, uh, but you know throughout the weeks and months to come. So feel free to come back and revisit this to look for updates. And if you have any things that you would suggest I add, uh, please let me know, and I'd be happy to add anything that might be of use to the community. Uh, a, a lot of these presentations, uh, people come in and do them for free as I am here. Uh, I'm doing it to help California Capital. I, I'm very philanthropic and altruistic. I, I've served on more than a dozen nonprofit boards. And uh, a lot of times when you see these workshops, it's about people pitching their product and services because they're trying to get business. And they include a bunch of affiliate links that they then send out to you and say, here, if you're going to get this, buy it, buy it here. Um, I don't do any of that. That's that's. I don't have a problem with people that do that. But I just want you to know up front that if I'm uh, talking about something and how good it is, uh, it's completely objective and unbiased as far as my perspective is. 
because I'm not trying to uh, make money on it in any way. But I'm going to teach you how to do that because that's what we're here for. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's how we all, all live and get by and contribute to the world uh, at the same time. So the most important link is that one I just sent you. You should uh, open up your chat and uh, bookmark that now, and you'll be able to come back and get to our resources later. Um, I just saw well, we receive a copy of the presentation. A, a question just came in. I don't do a traditional PowerPoint for this because I've uh, not to knock PowerPoints either. They're great for the right environment and the right type of presentation, but they often don't leave you with the real resources that you need to actually execute this stuff um, and see it in real life. So we are recording and I will make a copy of the recording available and you'll have the spreadsheet with, uh, with the sources so that you can come back to, uh, but I don't have a PowerPoint to share. But again, I'm happy to share all of the content that we do go through today. So with that, uh, let's get started and keep those questions coming in as they come to mind. And I'll glance over. If you see me looking to the left once in a while, I have another screen open with the big question panel open so I can see them come in. So with that, uh, we'll get started. Again, here's our uh, our website for the class. So if you happen to open that, you'll notice it looks a little different here because I have it embedded into a page. So all the different tabs, instead of being uh, as visible as they are in a Google Sheet, are down here at the bottom. So feel free to click there to get to what you might be looking for if you come back to this later. So here's what's going on in e-commerce, in case any of you haven't uh, been watching the news or you're like me and live up in the mountains isolated from a lot of what's going on. Uh, U.S. commerce e-commerce grew 44% in 2020. And online spending uh, is, is counting for the majority of that growth. Here's what U.S. commerce looks like, though, when you talk about e-commerce versus total retail sales. Um, you can see right now that that's a, a small fraction of total sales. Uh, but I think within a decade, this is going to be reversed, and you're going to see the vast majority of sales online. Uh, it's already changing at such a phenomenal rate that it's pretty obvious what's going to happen in the future. I don't think you'll ever lose uh, brick and mortar for things where people want to come in and then there's a social aspect to that type of shopping and also an adventure outing type of aspect. You know, you go have lunch and walk around the mall or walk around downtown and look at businesses and browse and that sort of thing. Uh, that's always going to be there, I think. But the practicality of online shopping is just too much to overcome in terms of the, the broader market over the long run. So you can see how, how sales have grown. And especially over this last year, for obvious reasons. So a lot of people, uh, you know, a decade or two after something takes off, say, I, I wish I would have got in on that earlier. Uh, this is the earlier, believe it or not. You are not too late. This is something starting to rise that's by nowhere, nowhere near done. And the advantages are pretty obvious. You can reach markets all over the world. So you could have a small little, you know, shoe shop in, in Wellsburg, West Virginia, and um, think that your main business is the two and a half thousand people that live in that town. But when you go online, your whole, your market becomes the world. Then you can do anything from that small shop that Amazon can do from their headquarters in, in Seattle. So that's why we want to get involved in this. And when you think about getting into a business, one of the things you look at is, um, and I don't want to go too far off on this, uh, but the, just to give you a bit of my educational background, I've uh, I've got an undergraduate degree from Carnegie Mellon University in uh, Business and Information Systems, and then went to grad school at the University of Chicago uh, in their MBA program where I focused on business to business and business to consumer marketing, and then also went to grad school at Harvard uh, for environmental management, which is where I tend to focus. Uh, my efforts and activities are on environmental issues, but I put those other skills to use. So looking at um, what's going on here in the marketing world is, is pretty topsy-turvy. And everybody who's in the field academically or otherwise uh, sees what's coming. And it was obvious when Amazon first went online. And it, it took them years to make money uh, before they became profitable. But now Jeff Bezos, uh, I believe, again, since Tesla stock dropped, is now, again, the richest person in the world. 
uh, with he and Elon Musk flip-flopping over the last couple of days. But you don't need to be that big and you don't need to get that rich. You need enough to make sure that you can live comfortably and take care of your family and pay your bills and not be stressed. And that's very doable uh, using e-commerce systems online. Now, if we want to look at uh, different types of platforms and talk about why we're going to be talking about those that we are, uh, this, is a, this is a platform called Built With, and it monitors the internet and determines who's using what for what purposes out there. So you can see for e-commerce usage distribution, uh, this is in the top 1 million sites that are online. And using this tool, you can you know, actually say entire internet if you want to, and let's see how that changes. Uh, not much. But you can see the really big ones are uh, those that we're going to be covering today. So here's WooCommerce, Shopify, Wix, Squarespace, and some of these others uh, like OpenCart, PrestaShop, and where they have other. Uh, some of them get a bit more technical and can be integrated into websites or uh, used with coding. And so I, I left those off of our list because we can stick to the main platforms that people are using that are also much easier and more accessible uh, to the majority of people who will call non-technical users. And when I say non-technical, um, that's not meant to be an insult or uh, demeaning in any way. I'm just talking about people who don't know how to code. So if you don't want to write your own code and, and integrate things into websites and manage your servers, then this is uh, the way to go. The things we're going to show you today don't require any of those skills. Uh, but you can see looking down here at the top, uh, we'll be covering all of these top four and how to, how to open an account and get started with them and also the pricing associated with those. So one of the easiest that everybody's uh, heard of, obviously, is uh, Amazon. And there are a couple ways that you can do business with Amazon. One is become an Amazon seller. So this is where you can see here more than half the units sold in our stores are from independent sellers. So I'm a big believer in taking what somebody else has done well. If they're making it available for you, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. If you've got a platform that you can use that's already going to do a lot of the work for you and you don't have to manage the technology behind it, fantastic. You know, that can be a great thing to leverage. Now, there are uh, fees associated with becoming a seller. And you can see here in the, the smaller print, uh, $39.99 a month plus selling fees. So here's where they charge a flat monthly fee, and then they charge you fees uh, for each items you sell as well. But you have a lot of options and, and uh, ways that you can make money using this program, and it's fairly easy to sign up. This link is also on our sheet. So if you came back here to look at our platforms, you can see this uh, Amazon link right here is what we're looking at. So that's one way to sell on Amazon, but there's also, a way, this is where you have your own products that you might want to sell. Uh, but the other way to do it is as an affiliate. So if you don't have your own products, but you want to sell other people's products because you're comfortable with your social media platforms and uh, putting a website up, which we'll cover while we talk about this today, then you'll see how easy that can be for everybody. Then you can use Amazon as associate affiliate program. I'm sorry, they call it Amazon Associates, but I don't want to confuse the two. One is being an Amazon seller, where you're selling all of your own items and paying to use their platform to sell. And the other is where you're selling Amazon's items. So other items that are already for sale on Amazon, you can set up your own uh, website, or use social media promotions and use that to uh, sell their products and make a commission. So you can see here they talk about um, earn up to 10% in associate commissions from qualifying purchases. Uh, so what happens is you pay or you you promote those products on your website and you can see who they're trying to appeal to, uh, thousands of creators, publishers, and bloggers. Let's see if I can blow this up a little bit. I realize that can be hard to see on a screen. So they want to reach people, who, Amazon wants to reach people who are already active in social media, have a website, or if you want to put one up and start marketing it, you can do that, and then you can promote their products. Uh, 
you can share it you know with your audience and then as people buy things through amazon then you can make money off of that uh one creative way i saw this used was my uh, uh godson and nephew who was uh, younger and living in, in a different state he was trying to figure out a way to come up with some money for christmas last year so i said how about this everybody else is doing all their shopping online in the family why don't you set up an Amazon affiliate account? I'll help you do it. I put up an Amazon affiliate account and a quick website that took about an hour to get online. And then he set that link out to all the other family members to buy the, do their Christmas shopping through. And as they used that link and uh, bought gifts, he ended up making something like $1,400 uh, just from commissions from just family purchases. And so he's kept that up and uh, he got the family to continue using his link when they remember uh, to make all their Amazon purchases. And he's got a nice little side income for uh, a teenager without a uh, you know job where he has to go punch a clock. The other place where you can uh, do that type of selling or sell your own products is of course eBay. And this is a good place if you've got, you know, items sitting around the house uh, that you want to get rid of or um, anything else that you really want to sell. So when eBay first started, it was everybody selling all their used items, which I loved if it kept them uh, at highest and best use, you know, either donate them to some place who's going to use them or give them out to people or sell them on eBay, anything to keep them out of the landfill before their time. And eBay, again, is very simple. Uh, many of you may have bought from eBay in the past, but not realized that you could also do selling. So uh, free to list, but you pay a 14% commission uh, and then 30% more when your item sells. So that's how eBay's making their money. Uh, but again, they're giving you the platform to get out there and, and sell, say, more used items than you would get through a um, through Amazon where you're selling new items. One of the other reasons I wanted to point this out is that any of the websites that make money, like the more you sell, the more money uh, they make because they're getting commi commission, they often give you uh, tools to use. So if you look down here, for example, here are uh, five ways to set yourself up for success, writing a relevant title, high quality photos, uh, choosing a format, setting the right price, saving on shipping. And the reason that's important, uh, and down here, the popular selling categories, the reason that's important is because you can go through here and use these tools and use the same techniques that you learn here uh, for your own selling platform. So maybe I'm not using eBay, but the concept of having high quality photos and choosing the right categories or keywords for search engine optimization still applies. And that's the same with Amazon. They provide some uh, tools and resources for you to use to optimize your sales on Amazon. If you're not using Amazon, still go through and use those tools to learn from. And Google uh, has some tools which are used for search engine optimization. And that's uh, typically the acronym used for that is SEO. So if you've ever seen that anywhere, uh, that's what it's all about. And what search engine optimization means is that you're choosing particular keywords to identify your products or your website. And then when people do a search on those terms, you want your site to come up uh, first. Then if not first, you definitely want it to come up in the, in the top few above the fold. And it's not just Google. I actually don't use Google myself. Uh, I use a tool called DuckDuckGo uh, for enhanced privacy. They, they don't track your searches. Um, which I have nothing to hide except I value privacy and I don't want to get bombarded with a bunch of ads. So I use DuckDuckGo, but the point is you should check all of the search engines, all the major search engines, uh, even Microsoft Bing. So, you know, use, uh, uh, well, there are a bunch of them that are options out there, Yahoo Search, uh, Bing, Google, and uh, DuckDuckGo. But check them out and see where you stand in the rankings when you first start your website. Give it a week or two because you need some time just for Google to even crawl the site. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in, in the uh, section on marketing. But Google will give you tools if you set up a Google ad account, which we'll also touch on in our uh, monetization options. A Google ad account is where you have let Google run ads on your website. And that's where you can uh, make money doing that. 
And then the other part of it is where you actually advertise on Google and pay them. And that's where they make all their money. So when you want to advertise on Google, they have tools that will help you determine what the best keywords are before you buy your ad. So you can optimize your ad for the results you want and set up the account, but then don't actually buy the ad. So you can set it up, use Google's tools, determine what your ad should say according to Google to get it as high as you can in the advertising ranks from Google, but then take those same keywords and optimization techniques that you learn for the ad and just implement those yourself in your website. So you're using Google to guide you and tell you how to improve your Google search results. And that's one of the best ways to get uh, sales. And I, as I mentioned before, I, I started my first business on you know, a shoestring. And the, anything you can get that works for free, that gives you an advantage or helps you, uh, helps keep your costs low You know, when you're first getting started is one of the keys to being able to stay around and build long enough uh, to get some money coming in and keep you afloat without you know, getting rid of all your revenue and actually losing money. So I'll be, almost everything I talk about in here is either very low cost or free and uh, good techniques to use. So that's eBay. And then I'm sure everybody's heard of Etsy these days. And Etsy's where uh, what it's known for are, are say, craftspeople, uh, people who make a lot of their own things, uh, people that are doing 3D printing, which used to be, you know, the type of thing for, you know, government labs and expensive, uh, expensive hardware and companies. But now that's become affordable uh, to a lot of people. In fact, my daughter, who is a what they call a maker in these uh, maker markets, so there's a whole movement of people that like to make their own things, and she does that. So uh, she's got a PhD in human computer interaction and. Uh, a great job with a major tech company in, in San Francisco, but she still loves making things. So she makes everything from uh, bracelets to earrings and lots of things on 3D printing, on her 3D printer, and then sells them on Etsy. And she's doing it more for fun than to make a lot of money, but her products are selling. And uh, the nice thing about the 3D printers is you can create your own product. You don't have to go through a whole uh, prototyping type process that you did say two decades ago uh, when I was recruiting people in the manufacturing world you had prototypers and if you were going to start making a product for the first time it was pretty expensive to get machinery set up to do all of that and make all those parts for the first time and then test them and now you can do it from your own home with a 3D printer so she makes all types of custom uh, items like you know if she knows you know what type of flowers my mother likes uh, she can make earrings that are those exact flowers with my mother's initials in the center. And it, you know, it might take her 20 minutes and those type of things can't even be bought. So that's a great type of a, of a product to put out on Etsy. And they charge as well. Uh, we have a listing here that shows what their charges are. And so with Etsy and eBay, it's the uh, commission plus sales fees. Amazon, you saw it was listed at 39 uh, 99 per month plus fees. The reason I put zero to 40 is because there's no charge at all for uh, the Amazon affiliate program where you're selling Amazon products. There's just a charge for the uh, to become a seller. So this is where you're using their platform, your their platform is selling all of your stuff, so they make money from the fee. Whereas this one, you're selling their stuff. So they make money from the sales, so they don't need to charge you for that. They just give you a smaller percentage. And that's the same with uh, Etsy. Now, here's where we're getting into uh, some of the bigger and more popular platforms. And let me see. I see another uh, question that came in. So if I already have my own website for my products, can I still use the website to be an Amazon affiliate? Um, Absolutely, uh, that's actually what it's for. So with an Amazon affiliate program, you'll notice what they're looking for is uh, join tens of thousands of creators, publishers, and bloggers who are earning with the associates program. So they're counting on you having your own website uh, because what they wanna do is have you introduce their products to your followers. So this is, a, is along the lines of, you've probably heard the term influencer quite a bit in the last uh, few years especially, 
and those are you know insta influencers instagram influencers youtube influencers so those people get a lot of press because they're the people that are literally making millions of dollars uh, just by posting on instagram and getting followers or posting youtube videos and getting followers and they're called influencers because they influence what people will buy uh, probably the most famous example of people who well, i don't want to demean anybody because they've actually done a lot more than this but what comes to mind are like the kardashians um they didn't actually create anything they just became famous and then once they became famous people wanted to were cared about their opinion and what they had to say and now i believe since then they've turned that into entrepreneur activities like clothing lines or designer fashion or something like that so it wasn't just that but the point is if you have a, a following you can capitalize on that following uh, by introducing products to them that people buy and then you get paid a commission for it. So you can absolutely add that to your own website. Now, uh, some of the websites and things we're gonna look at, especially when we get to our list, might have terms of service where you're not allowed to advertise a direct competitor's product. So for example, if you, and I'm just gonna make this up, uh, don't take this down as a fact. I'm just making it up to make the point. Let's say, for example, you had a website where you had a contract with Macy's and you were uh, advertising a lot of Macy's items. They might have something in the terms of service that says you're not allowed to do the same thing with another store where you have both Nordstrom and Macy's on your site. So that would be something to look for. Uh, but the vast majority, like those we're talking about today, don't have anything like that. Uh, that I'm aware of. But again, terms of service change all the time. So take a look, but I don't think you'll have any types of issues with that uh, as we're talking about it. So yes, definitely uh, use your own website. And uh, when we get towards the end and, the, and talking about the overall package and way to go, uh, you'll see that I recommend using more than one of these things. So you don't have to use just, uh, be just an Amazon affiliate or you know, in just selling on Etsy, um, you can use a combination of things together to optimize your best outcomes. Like, for example, you might uh, have a site where you're selling Amazon affiliate uh, products or as an Amazon affiliate, but you also have Google ads running on your site. So you get a lot of visitors to your site. That's really what it's all about. And then Google will place ads on your site if you let them. And anytime somebody clicks on that ad, you get paid a small commission. You know, it might be pennies, uh, but it could be thousands of clicks a day. I mean, that's overall how Google's made their billions is all on clicks. So regardless of which pursuit or, or which path you follow, the whole idea in the big picture is getting as many eyes as possible on your platform. Because once you capture the eyes, that's where you make the sales. And so it's about that uh, first and foremost uh, to get people to your site. Okay, I think that uh, covered that one. Okay, so uh, again, one of the one of the high profile uh, sites that you're hearing about a lot is uh, Shopify, and here's where you can come. Again, these links are all on our sheet, so you don't have to take a lot of notes here. And just uh, in case somebody's having a hard time reading any of these themselves, I'm going to send out a copy of this as well. And let me make sure I'm sharing properly. Um, okay, we're going to change it so this sheet is visible to anyone with a link is a viewer. I'm going to copy that link now, and I'm going to send this out in our chat. Okay, I just sent that out in the chat, so if anybody's having a hard time uh, reading the size of the print on my screen, feel free to open that sheet and bookmark it so you can come back and refer to it later. And again, uh, if, don't, don't miss the tabs at the bottom. That's pretty important. So the first tab is just our overall agenda. Then the second tab is the outline uh, platforms that we're looking at with the links. And then this one is the one you'll probably spend the most time with after the webinar, and that is our monetization options. And this is um, obviously not comprehensive, but it's uh, got a lot on it to get you started in the right direction. And then the last tab is our sources link. So feel free to uh, bookmark that now. And 
don't forget uh, this website, uh, the website that I just showed you, because this is where that is embedded, and I'll be updating it. Like this one on site monetization has probably changed 15 or 20 times since uh, I first put it up here. Uh, as new information becomes available, you can see one class participant ask about how to sell, and so I put this link in there for them. And uh, I'll continue building on that. So keep that handy, and it'll keep growing and updating. Uh, so with Shopify, again, you could uh, set this all up. One of the advantages of this type of a system is that that's what they're focused on, and they're doing almost all of your hosting and uh, all the technical work, anything that you're, you might not want to do yourself, they'll do for you. So you can see here some examples of uh, people that are selling different things, home and garden, cosmetics, uh, food and drink, jewelry, again, another food and drink. So whatever your products are, you can set up a Shopify account, and then you market that to your customer base and have them purchase through here. And you can see the pricing. I think, I, yeah, I already have it preloaded here. Just another, excuse me, just another tip. Whenever you're going to be doing an online presentation that involves websites, um, you always want to preload all the tabs. So that's why I have so many up here. And uh, when you get online, especially, your bandwidth can slow down. So you don't want to wait for a tab to load or have to sit there and watch the spinning beach ball. So I preloaded these. Uh, almost everybody gives you a, a free day a free trial. So you can you know dip your feet in the water and see what you think. Is it comfortable for you? Is their staff support good? Uh, maybe buy an item from yourself and see how the process goes. And you can see what they offer here at different pricing levels. So one of the things I want to point out is is what you miss. You know, so some of them, if you go through, you'll see whether you're spending 29 or 299. You can see what things are included and when, what they pay more, for, charge more for. So you can see when they start talking about reports. Uh, calculating shipping rates, uh, shipping discounts, printing labels, all this type of thing, uh, credit card sales rates. So it looks like they have the payment processor built into their system, but you need to confirm that. And when you're comparing platforms, you know, you could make a big spreadsheet and then go through and, and check every one against the spreadsheet and see how they all compare. But one way to shortcut that is to uh, pick the one that seems to be the most comprehensive and then go through and just compare each one to that. And one of the reasons I wanted to show you this is that uh, you need to you pay a lot more for these extra add-ons and some of the other platforms I'll show you that are free uh, include all those things. So we also have uh, Wix. So Wix is uh, pretty popular and you can see what the pricing is there. And again, what's included a 14 day money back guarantee. So looks like they're charging you, but you get a refund as opposed to uh, 14 days free. Can I try a, a Wix premium plan for free? Let's see if they, well, they're saying yes and then cancel to receive a refund. So one of them, it looks like they don't charge you for the first 14 days. This one they charge you, but you can get your money back if you don't like it. Another one here that's uh, pretty big and popular is Squarespace. Oh, looks like we have another question come in. Um, I have a domain. Can I use it on Shopify? Uh, probably. Let me just double check that. I haven't used Shopify myself, but typically they give you an option for that, but it, it costs a little more. So let's see if they um, talk about domains. I'm, I'm thinking they're going to let you do that. Um, I don't see it listed here. But that just is common sense to me, especially with if you're paying for one of the more uh, updated or uh, one of more advanced systems. But let's uh, let's see what they say. So we'll just go to the help center, use my domain, and all this is uh, when you want to use your own domain, is it will they just uh, might charge you more as an upgrade. And then you just change your DNS settings, which is um, in your domain registration platform, like, say, for example, GoDaddy or Register.com. There are places in there where 
you have different things pointed to different IP addresses. And you use what's called an A record or a C name record, and you can uh, make one domain look like another, basically. So let's see, you can have uh, multiple domains. Here's how you do it. So you just go into the online store domains, Shopify manage domains, click the domain that you want to transfer, click DNS settings. That's what I just mentioned. Uh, add new custom records. So it looks like you can. So how to connect a third party domain. And that's what we're talking about. And so it looks like they've got a video here to show you how to do that. So you can use your own domain. And then when they say verify, typically you'll put in uh, stores that use my Shopify USO. The only domain can't verify, well, they shouldn't have to. Um, if you have a custom, you can verify by putting a meta tag. So what that is, is they'll, they want to make sure that you own that domain before you try to do something with it. So they'll give you a small piece of data and say, add this to this place in your site file system to prove that you own it. And then they'll scan your site and verify that that tag is there. Here they're using a meta tag verification system. And once they do, then they'll they'll work with you to use that domain. So uh, yes, it looks like you can. And uh, Wix is another big one. So you can see the different uh, features again here and the charges. And I'm not spending a lot of time on these because I think uh, towards the end, you'll see that there are some you can get there pretty much free. <laughs> so uh, my recommendations uh, for most people would be to go with that option. And we'll talk about why and spend time looking at it more deeply when we get there. Another big one, uh, Squarespace. One of the things nice about Squarespace, and they all have strengths and weaknesses, but Squarespace uh, gives you a website and then uh, you can modify that website using a lot of just drag and drop and very intuitive type of web building processes. So you don't have to do your own theme or come up with it yourself. They've got it all laid out. You pick the theme, you can move things around and organize them out how you'd like to make them look nice and then just add your products and prices and shipping options. Uh, but you see what they set up for you. So even a site like this that you, is their site, uh, they'll have platforms available you know, that look nice, that you don't have to spend a lot of time with a designer or doing it yourself uh, to get that kind of a look. And here's where their pricing is. So again, anywhere from 12 to 40, um, but you can see where they've got basic commerce and advanced commerce starting at 26 and 40, where you can pay annually. And that might even be the price they're showing, I'm not sure. And the big difference is if you come down here as uh, being able to do sales, have customer accounts, uh, do checkouts on your domain, e-commerce analytics. And then you can see down here some of the add-ons for the most expensive is uh, selling uh, abandoned cart recovery. So if somebody uh, comes in, logs in, puts things on their cart and then leaves, if they come back into the site, the things in their cart will still be there. So you're prompting them to buy something that they were considering buying recently. Uh, selling subscriptions, which is a great way to monetize your site if you've got good content that people will pay for. Uh, advanced shipping, advanced discounts, uh, commerce APIs. An API is an application uh, programming interface. So that's where if, if something has an API, and I believe Amazon has one, and you have a coder or you could code yourself, you can connect through that API and then write custom code to make the website do whatever you want uh, within the limits of that API's capabilities. And then limited availability labels. So these are the kind of things to me that well, you'll see again with one of the platforms we're going to be looking at and spending more time with, these are all free and included. So when I think about what are they adding and why does it cost more, it doesn't cost them a penny more to give you abandoned cart recovery or to sell subscriptions. Uh, it costs them no more, but they know you're willing to pay more, so they charge you more. Then when I see something like that, that tells me there's a loss of cost efficiency for the consumer. Um, if they bill more for things that don't cost them anymore, that's pretty much pure profit for them and pure loss for you, you know, with those things that could be available somewhere else. 
Then we've got uh, wordpress.com. And so like, uh, this is something that confuses a lot of people with WordPress. Uh, WordPress has two different ways that are very different from each other uh, to go about utilizing it. WordPress first came out as a blog tool and that's what it was all about. But they went far beyond that and now uh, you'll see in a second that they're the most used web platform in the world uh, for websites by far. And we'll look at some of those statistics in a minute. But there are two different approaches to it. One is WordPress.com. That's what we're looking at here. And WordPress.com is like a, a Shopify or a Wix or a, a Squarespace in that they provide the platform for you. So they've done the hosting. Uh, you, you put your domain in, you know, the same thing that we talked about just recently on the, on the Shopify website. So you put your domain in, you can use your own domain or use their domain, uh, which might be something like, you know, um, you know, Bob sales at wordpress.com or Bob sales dot wordpress.com. It'd be like a subdomain um, or you can pay a little more and use your own domain, but the wordpress.com platform. So here they take care of all your hosting for you and general management in the background. Um, if you want to get up to e-commerce, they want you to pay 45 per month and that's billed yearly. So uh, if you tried to bill per month, you'd want to go down to this option. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, well, this one actually is also billed, year, billed annually. Um, but you can see the different things that they offer and what they charge more for. Here's accepting payments in 60 plus countries, integration with top shipping, premium design options for online stores. This is WordPress.com. And so again, think about that similar to these other products. But there's also WordPress.org. And WordPress.org is uh, where you take the same, take the WordPress software and you download that or upload it to your server, or you pay a, uh, pay for hosting at a company that includes WordPress as part of their services. They'll actually install it for you for no charge. But what happens there is, let's say, and I'm gonna I'm gonna break one of my own rules here just to show you something as a side note. Well, here's one I like to use. This is ISO. Uh, dot net and I like this one myself and for my clients because it's a uh, solar powered hosting it's in California and they're uh, they're for real they have what's called like a lead platinum building so they're very sustainable and a lot of my clients are in the field of sustainability and I want to walk the talk so it comes down to you know um, marketing and, and branding as well for me to make sure that I'm using something that's as green and sustainable as I can. But you'll notice up here for hosting, um, they talk about WordPress optimized. Almost any host is gonna be fine with WordPress. So you're not gonna have a problem with that. Some of this is just a marketing ploy. But if you look at the, what they've got and how much they charge, it can be pretty inexpensive. So, and I do actually have an affiliate account for them, but I'm not listing the link. So I'm sticking to my rule of not making any money off of this or even trying to, um, but just, you know, they do have a program. So even if you use ISO, you can put a link in your bottom of your website saying something like hosted on uh, solar powered Calif California solar powered servers or something like that. And if somebody clicked that link and bought, you'd even make a small commission from that. Uh, but you can see what they charge here. Three years prepaid is 18 per month. And a lot of this is stuff you don't even really need. And you can see what they also offer as a part of this package. But you can generally get hosting for, let's see if they've got a dedicated e-commerce. We'll just go with regular website hosting because that's all you really need. And you can see here that you can get it for, 625 a month and then if you want to pay monthly ten dollars a month so that's what i was alluding to when i said here um, wordpress.org eight to ten a month that's all you pay for is your hosting so that hosting also can include email so if i had a site like for example i might set up a demo for e-commerce on one of my domains called crretail.com uh, 
www.crowdfunding.com. And under crretail.com with a wordpress.org site, I can also have all of my own email addresses, as many as I'd like, at uh, crretail.com. So that's what you get when you go to uh, Green Geeks or HostGator, Bluehost, uh, a majority of them out there will give you a decent hosting platform for under $10 a month. If you start getting very busy and you need more than that, then you can always upgrade. But that's all, all you need for WordPress.org. And this is WordPress.org. So let's first look at, uh, before we jump into that and go a bit deeper, let's look at how much that's being used. So the market tells you a lot, right? You can, if, if people are using things, you can tell it's not just advertising, um, the people are using it and it's working. So this is a CMS is a, a content management system and that's what WordPress.org is. So th these are all content management systems. And just about 10 years ago, uh, Drupal and Joomla uh, were the most used out of all of these types of platforms. If you look at what's going on now, this is out of the top 1 million sites on the internet. So we're talking about some pretty powerful sites and WordPress is 41% of all websites uh, in the top 1 million. And if you get even tighter, so you can say, you know, I've, I've heard this before when people would say, oh, yeah, that's fine. But uh, WordPress is fine for a general small site, but they'll never be used by any of the major sites. It's just, you know, too easy. It's not sophisticated. Well, that's just not true. Here's the top 10,000 sites on the Internet. So these other 65 percent, most of those are going to be all hand coded. So you have somebody that. Uh, sits down and writes all the code for the site manually to make it work as efficiently as they want to. But even among the top 10,000 sites, uh, WordPress has 18% of them. So that's that's a pretty big chunk for people who could pay anything that they wanted. You know, when we're talking about the top 10,000, we're probably talking about all companies with you know more than a, a hundred million in sales that can pay any amount they want to any developer to build anything they want from scratch. But 18% of them still see WordPress as the best option, um, including I think the new White House website went up on WordPress and uh, CNN uses WordPress. Um, I think the New York Times uses WordPress. So a lot of, again, large companies with uh, pretty big budgets still choose WordPress as their platform of choice. Then, that's that's the uh, content management system. If we look at e-commerce systems, again, look at WooCommerce. So WooCommerce right now has uh, just a little under twice the market share of Shopify. And then you've got Magento coming in third. And Magento is a tool that can be built into the websites, but it's not as simple to use as uh, these two are. And then other is 42. But by far, WooCommerce as an individual platform is the most popular in the top 1 million sites. And you can see by country too, if you had a market in a particular country, you can see what they're using. And one of the reasons this matters is not so much that um, you wanna use what's popular just because it's popular, but what happens is all the best developers go to where the market is. So if you have somebody writing um, code for plugins, and I'll talk about what those are in a minute, you'll you'll see that all the best developers go to where the market is. And if the market's using WooCommerce, that's what they're going to be developing for. If the market's using WordPress, that's what they're going to be developing for because they want to get the, the biggest share of market as they can. And so we looked at the top 10,000. Um, this is the entire internet. So for the entire internet with approximately 64 almost 65 million websites, you've got 43% of them using WordPress. So this is WordPress. This is WordPress.org. And uh, let me see here. We've got a couple more questions come in. Okay, I'm going to read these out loud. Sometime during the presentation, can you address the use of e-commerce platforms for B2B versus B2C? Uh, we are a management and technology consulting firm that provides complex tech services, major energy and water utility companies nationally with two-thirds of our work in California, uh, 300 plus employees. 
have a website operate pretty much as a virtual business having closed our tech literary center in response to the pandemic we found linkedin somewhat useful for general professional networking but not really as a uh, marketing sales platform yeah yes i will address that and uh, they are done differently the, the concepts are the same it's just how you target your market and how you reach that market and so uh, linkedin can be useful um, specifically there there are different ways to use it though and you've probably got a, a budget for you know advertising and promotion uh, but a lot of it too is just uh, working within particular groups that have appeal or have a use for your service and also starting those groups um, just as an example whenever I was uh, running my recruiting firm one of our practices was uh, the metals industry so we that's where we became the largest search firm in the country uh, within three years in that particular industry but within a segment of that industry so in, in metals for example you've got uh, producers like the big the big mills that produce uh, heavy rod iron and bar and then those go down into processors where say things are extruded or flattened or rolled and if, so you might take uh, sheets you know steel and roll it down into flat sheet steel that then can be sent to a manufacturer and the manufacturer then forms products out of those items so um you're in a particular industry in, in water and i actually do a bit of work in water myself uh but more on the um, on the conservation side and sustainability uh, but i work with a lot of conservation districts and we're actually working on a big uh, project for the department of water resources that's supposed to launch in like two weeks but we got funded for the next three years so we're, we're pretty happy about that and we'll be working with a lot of the water people around sacramento uh, so if you'd like to reach out to me individually and uh, we can connect i'll see if there's anything in that um in that grant or contract that might be uh might apply to the types of services you offer there could be some room for it in there but anyway uh yes we will address that so with LinkedIn, what I did with that particular case, that was all um, B2B. So when I'm advertising for recruiting services, obviously I wasn't trying to advertise to you know the, the employees, I'm advertising to the companies that hire us for that. And so one of the things I did was uh, created a, a LinkedIn group related to jobs in that industry. And I, I put a few things in there and then just let it grow and the next thing you know, we had a group of more than 70,000 people uh, that were all coming in there and talking about jobs and hiring, and I owned the group. So you can build your market um, that way, but another way to do it is go where they are already. So rather than the idea of uh, build it and they will come, you know, the, the famous movie line, uh, what I like to do is find out where they are and then I go to them. So if you go to LinkedIn and, and get into all the water groups and then start posting there, there's a whole process for that too. You don't wanna go in and just start pushing your services the first time you post. Uh, start posting things that are of interest to the group, become part of the group first. Then when people mention anything related to your products or services is when you plug it in um, as a as, to meet their response, to meet their question, to answer their question, rather than doing it as a proactive ad. Um, and we have classes actually that I, I taught at California Capital that get that focus just on that sort of thing and using social media to build your market. Um, the website is just the same concept, except instead of the words you would use to appeal to uh, end consumers, you would use it to appeal to the businesses. So think about what your client's needs are and then optimize your site, uh, particularly in terms of search engine optimization to make sure that if somebody's searching on the services you offer, that you come up towards the top. And then uh, you probably have a sales trainer that uh, uses keywords and branding. Just make sure you integrate all of that same thing, those same processes and principles into your website. And uh, that can work. And I know uh, <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny that you mentioned that. I, I remember when I first started the search firm, and I was um, trying to think of a name for it. We were working in the metals industry. I knew I had a, an in there to at least get started on a couple of searches. And then I was trying to think of a name for the firm. I did my undergrad at Carnegie Mellon and Andrew Carnegie was the founder of US Steel. 
and that name is pretty well known. And then, um, so I thought, all right, I'll call it the Carnegie Partners Executive Search. And I ran it by a couple other people. They thought it was a great name for a metals industry search firm. I put up a website and within a week or two, when I was calling and talking to companies and sent our website, it looked totally professional. I mean, it, our website was as good as any of the big five accounting firms or you know, the, the people that had websites up at that point. This was mid nineties. And uh, I was calling companies and sending them our website. Like, oh, yeah, we've heard of you guys. We've heard of you guys. You're pretty big, huh? And uh, we were actually like on our third project at the time. But uh, doing a website right, you know, you can compete with anybody in the world. And it sounds like you're one of those people that already is uh, doing quite well in your marketplace. But uh, the difference between B2C and B2B is just what you're appealing to uh, when you're trying to make the pitch. Okay, so uh, so this is WordPress.org, and WordPress.org is very different than WordPress.com in that you'll see here with WordPress.com, here's the pricing. Uh, WordPress.org, you don't pay for anything. This is all completely free. And so it'll say, you know, get WordPress. And what they want you to do is just download it. So you can download WordPress and install it on your server but as they say here, the easiest is through a hosting provider. And so what you'll do there is when you contact a hosting company, um, the majority of them now will put WordPress up for you. So I question the security. I, I generally don't like the way they do it, um, but that's because I take a lot of uh, extra steps to make my sites more secure you know, with things like hiding things in different directories and changing file paths. Uh, things that are outside the norm of what they would do when they're installing. But other than that, it's fine. And a lot of them provide good security as well and keep the servers all up to date and security software up to date for you. But the point is that this is free. This is totally free software. If anybody ever says they want to charge you for WordPress.org software, um, they're actually violating the law because this is um, – well, they're taking advantage of you in spite of loss. Um, they use a general public license for WordPress.org. It's it's totally open source software. And the reason that's important is that if you do use WordPress, unlike uh, Shopify, for example, and you wanted to do something that it doesn't do now, you can hire a coder to make it work for you. And they can work with WordPress code and they can see WordPress code and change it any way you want them to change it. Uh, whereas with other things, like, for example, if if you're using Microsoft Office and you want a feature in Word that it doesn't have, you need to wait for Microsoft to add that feature if you ever want to see it. If you're using an open source platform, uh, you can go to a coder, and that's not always a big deal. You know, it might take one hour of time or something for a coder to add a new feature to the software that it doesn't come with, and that's fine. And what comes as a result of that is this uh, – these plugins, which are pretty powerful. So you'd go to WordPress.org and either download the software and install it on your server, or when you're picking a hosting provider, ask if they include WordPress and can set it up for you and provide the admin username and password. And if they can do that, you're all set. Now, the reason that matters is that we're talking about e-commerce here. And uh, just to give you some idea of how many plugins there are available, let's see if there's a... Uh, they used to have a count here somewhere, uh, but I would expect that there are probably, oh, well, here we go, 58,000 plugins. So what a plugin is, is a, a piece of software that works with WordPress to do other features. So as I talked about developers going to where the market is, developers uh, will come in here and write plugins and then add them to this directory, and the vast majority of them are completely free. Those that aren't free usually have a free version, and then you pay a little more if you want to add to that. So since we're talking about e-commerce, and again, I preload everything when I can, I just went here to plugins, and I did a search e-commerce, and just look at what comes up for that. So you've got WooCommerce, which we're going to be spending some time with here shortly, and I'll point out that that developer's automatic. And Automatic is now the main parent company of WordPress itself. So the founder of WordPress, who um, started it down in Austin, Texas, but now lives in San Francisco, and uh, he's a musician. I've actually gone and seen him play a couple times and talked to him a couple times. 
but uh, he also started Automatic. So, and WooCommerce was its own company for a while, but they became part of Automatic. So now you've got uh, them working directly with WordPress. So you know that you're going to have a good solid product. And um, there are tons of add-ons here. So here, for example, is the PayPal checkout gateway. That's completely free. Um, here's an analytics, uh, enhanced e-commerce Google Analytics plugin. Google Analytics is free. Then you can add this plugin and they'll work together. Here's MailChimp. So MailChimp is a pretty large uh, newsletter platform that works with WooCommerce. Uh, product catalogs, uh, vendor marketplace, shipping and tax. So all these things that you might need to pay for on some of these other platforms, you can work with WooCommerce and add them all to your WooCommerce platform for no cost at all. Um, so you see how nice that is and why there's an advantage to using free and open source software. And a lot of these things now come in WooCommerce anyway. So what will happen is if, if there's a plugin out there that's uh, doing pretty well or everybody seems to be installing it, WooCommerce can either say, well, we trust them. They're doing that part of it. It's working well. There's a product there. But eventually they start adding all those features in. So if, if they see everybody using WooCommerce, for example, is, is adding this easy digital downloads um, e-commerce platform, when that one, I don't know if that's even WooCommerce compatible, but let's just say enhanced Google Analytics um, or something, else, some other feature, they'll start adding that into WooCommerce directly. But that's where you can um, just get a lot of gains and these are all free. So if I get, went to WooCommerce, for example, <coughs> excuse me, uh, you can see they say is the world's most popular open source e-commerce solution. Uh, last updated two weeks ago. Here's the version they're on, the requirements. Uh, you can see it works in 65 different languages, very highly rated. And it talks about how to do a lot of the, the things we've been talking about, which are built right in. So rise on the top of search results by leveraging WordPress's SEO advantage, um, built in tools for setup wizards, how, how you uh, choose how you want to get paid. So over a hundred different payment gateways. So you can use Stripe or PayPal or Square. In fact, we're using WooCommerce on the California Capital website right now. And when somebody goes in and pays for a, a workshop, that's what they're using. They're going in and paying through WooCommerce. But California Capital has its own um, account for a payment processor. And even that payment processor built a plugin that we were able to use to make it work with WooCommerce. Um, so a lot of people adapt to that, and that's what we're looking at. So you can you can see what all is offered here, and you can use it straight out of the box, uh, but you can also see why developers choose and love WooCommerce, because you can also go in and customize any of that code to your exact specifications. Now, people won't have to. So you'll see when we get into uh, dipping in deeper into WooCommerce that, uh, you don't need to do any of this stuff, any of these, anything that requires coding. But the point is, if you wanted to, so let's say you were building a business and you might start out with five or 10 customers, then it gets up to 100, then 1,000, then 10,000. And next thing you know, you're, you know, 20 or 30,000 customers making purchases a month. You might say, well, I can't believe it. I started with WooCommerce, but I wish it could do this other thing that this other software could do. Now I wonder if I should have started with the other software. Well, you never have to have that regret because with WooCommerce or anything open source, you, you don't have to change anything. You say, great, I'll just hire a developer. And sometimes again, it might just take a couple hours. You know, So we're talking a couple hundred bucks uh, to get that feature. Instead of having to switch your whole platform, uh, you can grow with this. In fact, many of the products my own company has um, that Mobius, we've we've leveraged off of looking at what how open source software platforms did it and then made it better. Uh, looks like we have another question come in. Oh, is WordPress like Shopify and the others or to be used with them? Uh, both. So that's one of the things I really love about WooCommerce or WordPress is it's like a, uh, imagine if you had a, a car 
And instead of going and buying a Ford or a Chevy or a Toyota or, you know, or a Tesla, instead what you did was you bought a modular framework of a car. And that car uh, had thousands of interchangeable parts all made by different people, but all made to the same standards to work with that car. So you could go out and uh, we'll say unplug your fenders and then put on a thousand different fender options and add them to that car. And you could, if your engine was a gas combustion engine and you wanted to go electric, you went and you pull a few wires, lift that engine out, drop another one in, connect the wires, and now you're all electric. So imagine a car, it was like a Lego set. And you can add anything you wanted to that or take anything off and all the parts were completely compatible. That's what WordPress is. And so as a matter of fact, you know, we talked about um, using WooCommerce with WordPress. Uh, and then we talked about Shopify and we talked about Amazon. Well, let's do this. Let's go back to this tab for plugins and let me see what they have for Shopify. How about that? So I could also add Shopify. So one of the reasons I really love WordPress and recommend it is all its flexibility and long-term uh, sustainability. And when I talk about sustainability, it's not just from an environmental standpoint. Um, what thinkers today are talking about, if they're really thinking about it, and um, one of the things I didn't mention, but is relevant to what I'm about to say, is that I'm also one of the uh, founding board members of the U.S. Zero Waste Business Council. So we started a program where we were teaching companies how to achieve zero waste. And we started with some smaller places, uh, but within, again, a few years, we had uh, Vaughn Safeway, Whole Foods, Toyota, Hewlett Packard, Microsoft, Apple, Google, um, the biggest, highest profile names you can think of, all adopted our program. So we were so excited when we had the uh, Toyota Director of Sustainability come to our conference and say that based on what he saw us do in the program we created, uh, they were con they were making all of their global uh, manufacturing operations zero waste. And it's because of the system we taught them. And so um, it's a modular system that anybody can use for anything. And that's the same type of thing here with, with uh, when you talk about sustainability, it's not just environmental sustainability, it's a triple bottom line. So that's what you wanna shoot for. You can't go for environmental sustainability and forget the fact that you might be putting 8 million people out of work and trying to achieve that. But you also can't say, I'm gonna maximize profit and I don't care if my product kills 8 million people by the biotoxins that it produces because there's no law against that. So that's not sustainable socially. So what we're looking at when I talk about sustainability is a triple bottom line of people, planet, profit. So you wanna make sure that your company is, is uh, doing something productive and playing a good role in society and generally helping people in some way, even if it's not direct. And then you're not damaging the planet, you're doing the best you can to keep our environment uh, strong and safe and resourceful. And then of course you still have to make profit. So. You can't say that I'm going to take care of the environment and make sure I'm a really nice company that does no harm, but we're losing money and we'll be out of business in a week. That's not sustainable either. WordPress is ultimately sustainable because you can do so much with it and and you can make money with it and you can modify it any way you need to to stay relevant. So here for uh, the Shopify plugin, if I click that, Savvy WordPress plugin empowered businesses, creators, and uh, go-getters to sell Shopify products on any WordPress site. So all you do is you put this plugin in, and I'll show how you add a plugin. It's really simple, like three clicks and you're done. And then you could put your Shopify site inside your WordPress site. So that's just one example. Now let's look at, uh, again, we'll go to plugins here. Now let's see Amazon. Best WooCommerce multi-vendor solution, build your own Amazon, eBay, Etsy. So now what they're talking about here is uh, having a multi-vendor marketplace and all they're saying is, you know, build your own platform like these. Um, but what you'll find is that there are places where you can do 
Amazon, here it is, like Amazon Autolinks, Amazon Associates Affiliate Plugin, um, Ad Managers, WooCommerce Amazon Pay, um, Amazon In Post Plugin. And so you can see uh, Amazon Affiliate Product Availability Tracker. So all of these plugins are available for Woo for uh, WordPress, where you can also use Amazon. So you can, the reason I, uh, well, there are a whole bunch of reasons, as you can tell. But when we get more into the um, the last part where we talk about marketing, there's a whole system that I advocate. And uh, I won't jump into that now. but I take a systems approach to everything. So whether it's the environment where you're talking about, you know, say the flow of water, where I have a saying, everybody's downstream when it comes to water because it's one big cycle, you know, whether it's the rain in the clouds going into the ground, evaporating back up, it, it's a cycle. And you have to think of everything, especially in a closed system as a system. And when I think of this type of uh, work that we're talking about, and I'm going to, Go ahead and open this too. This is a this is my company. It's uh, just mis.systems. We have a couple of websites we're in the process of uh, converting over, but I just want to pull this up for a second to give it a, uh, a framework. So we're we're Mobius Intelligent Systems, and what we're talking about is intelligent information systems. So that's a fairly comprehensive term. Uh, that includes things like websites, outreach systems, chat bots, uh, and we get into some specific things for recycling and materials management, uh, GIS services. But th this is what we're talking about, what you're seeing right here. And uh, I'm going to get into that deeper in a minute, but what, or in a couple minutes. But what I really like is the comprehensive outreach system. So here we're talking about a COPE system, create once, publish everywhere. Uh, targeted content sourcing, sourcing, automated and scheduled web posts, automated newsletter publishing, social media publishing. And social media is great. You can do a lot with it, but it's also somewhat limited and they can change on you in a minute. So I have a lot of Facebook clients where I use uh, Facebook to promote their businesses for them or their missions. So approximately 26 cities in California uh, use us and me for our for their social media outreach in particular subject matter areas. And so we uh, we have a system where we can push one button and it'll post to 56 different WordPress sites and go out to approximately 52 Facebook pages. It Well, it goes out to Facebook, Google+, LinkedIn, WordPress, uh, Twitter, YouTube, Insta, and it also goes into different newsletters depending on how it's tagged. So I like using a a uh, uh, website as your primary tool because then you can do search engine optimization uh, to get your website where you want it to be and then you can switch things in and out as often as you like so say i'm using amazon on my wordpress site and i say you know what i think i'm going to try shopify for a while now i can use shopify and pull that right into the wordpress site and uh, you know just about anything else i haven't looked for ebay so let's see i'm just curious here I don't know if it'll have anything. Of course, I should have known it would. Um, e WP Lister Lite for eBay. List products from WordPress on eBay. Auction Nudge, your eBay on your site. Embed live eBay list listings. WP eBay product feeds. So you can see why I like WordPress so much. I can install WordPress. And that is my core. That is what I do my search engine optimization around. That's the core of my social media hub. Um, I'm going to show you one here that, let's see. Here, we'll do this one. So here's uh, North Bay Recycling Market Development Zone. Uh, we we have a, a work, we're doing work with the state of California with uh, 39 recycling market development zones throughout the state. One of the things we have here is uh, market news. By the way, you'll notice this is a, what's called a single page website, uh, which is the new design that I really love because you can you build one page and as soon as it loads, it loads instantly after that. So I can jump back and forth 
and never have to reload a page. Um, but anyway, like if we go down here to news, you can see these posts coming in and we never have to do anything with these. They get posted once and they come in, they get posted from one place and then this is one of the sites they post out to that's a part of our system. Uh, they also offer uh, small lo small business loans through part of their uh, work, but it's it's specific to manufacturing. But you get the point. So with uh, we have a system that brings in content that's relevant to the market. It gets categorized. Then you pu you push one button, and we have different newsletters. So one goes out to recycling market development zone people, which are involved in manufacturing. The other newsletter goes out to residential recycling customers. Totally different type of content, but it all starts with that one system. And we can do all this because of WordPress and the way it integrates with so many other things. So that's why I like uh, WordPress so much. And so there's eBay. Um, now, you're not going to find something for Wix or Squarespace because they're direct competitors of WordPress. But for any of these other third-party platforms, uh, there's a good chance that you will and that they'll integrate. And if there, there's not a way to integrate, um, as long as that other platform has an API you can use, then your developers can integrate it for you. And that's the power of WordPress and why it's so popular. So I hope that uh, answered the question about whether you can use Shopify uh, with WordPress. And it's even, um, again, I don't know if there are rules in the specific terms of service, but there's nothing wrong with using multiple platforms either and test them, you know, do a split test where you put a product up on Etsy and you put a product up on Amazon and put one up on eBay, uh, the same exact product at the same price point and watch what happens with them. And uh, I haven't looked at Etsy. Let's see if you can do Etsy and WordPress. Um, here it is, Etsy shop. Plugin that allows you to insert Etsy shop sections in pages or posts using a bracket or shortcode method. And what that means when they say bracket or shortcode is they'll just give you a little strip of code that has a bracket on each side. And all you do is put that bracket in that little line you know, single line of code, you just paste that into your site on the page where you want it, and it'll show all those products and things there. So that makes it very easy. So, and then here's uh, WooCommerce products to Etsy. And you can also do that with Amazon. So again, think about it as a comprehensive system where you're using every platform you can, as long as it's not uh, distracting to you and the work you're doing, and you're getting a good return on your investment of time. So uh, why limit yourself? You know, if you can be selling in, in 30 different stores instead of one store and you still only have to fix your WordPress site or work on that and to use all those things, then use them. Uh, and on top of that, we'll look at, you know, all the different ways to monetize too. So uh, also in terms of resources, this is YouTube. If you go out and just do a search on WooCommerce, again, like I said, I want to leave people with the tools and resources to go do this stuff themselves uh, because we don't have time to actually do it for everybody in this class. But with the tools I'm providing, you will we'll be able to do it yourself um, or hire somebody to do it for you, but you probably don't need to if you just get started. And when you want, want to learn something, if you just type WooCommerce, you're going to come up with hundreds, like literally hundreds of tutorial videos. Uh, you can see all these and how many views they're getting. And, and uh, sometimes it's good to just find somebody who uh, you don't find abrasive or annoying and subscribe to their channel. But a better way to do it once you have the general, uh, the general method down is look for things you want to do specifically. So let's say instead of um, a, a whole comprehensive tour of WooCommerce, which could literally take hours, like this one is two hours and 45 minutes long, when really all you might need is, um, let's see, is design. So creating products. So here's one that's, how long is this one? 15 minutes. And there are probably some that are two or three minutes. Here's uh, 15 best WooCommerce plugins that'll make you money. Um, and then, you know, so there's, you can see how all of these things come into play. And they're all right here. So here's using it with Elementor, 
which is a great design tool that I like. Uh, a lot of WooCommerce versus Shopify. But if you're using WordPress, here, look at this one, uh, Shopify versus WordPress and WooCommerce. But you can use Shopify in WordPress too. So you don't have to limit yourself even to WooCommerce. But that gives you some idea. And if you're coming in to do something specific though, like let's say, uh, you know, WooCommerce the categories, uh, look for that so that you're not spending two hours watching a video to find something that's five minutes from the end. So, you know, here's one, how to use WooCommerce subcategories. That's a five minute video and they walk you right through it. And you'll, you'll notice they don't have a single line of code. So the only thing technical about it or that can be challenging at first is it's just like using say Microsoft Word where you just go up into the menu and see what each item in the menu does. Once you know what each item in the menu does, you can do it. But the only process is seeing what item in the, each item in the menu does. And that's the same thing with uh, WooCommerce here. You're really just, once you see what they do and how they do it, uh, there's no technical part. It's just knowing where everything is in the menu and knowing where the settings are. So for example, um, well, this is the outreach system that we were alluding to a moment ago. So this is a system, this is my system. We built this. I'm not selling it uh, to you guys. I'm not trying to. I just want to use this because there are tools within WordPress that you can add yourself that will do these features. Uh, what we did was rewrote our own code to blend them all into one system so that they would work together from one little dashboard. But basically, you can pull in content from any place that you want. It comes in, you set up filters based on keywords and things you're looking for. It goes into your WordPress site. You push the button. And when you do that, you can choose to publish or trash or categorize. Uh, when you do that, it goes out and reaches your target audiences. So let's say that you are working in the water field. Then you would set up uh, different sources including um, search engine tools that will go out and search for specific content for you every day. They bring them in and they create them as draft posts in WordPress. You can put them in as pending or draft. Pending is pending review. So depending on the number of steps you have in your process, uh, what we do is we bring in like thousands of them to different locations. And then there are people that review those and they come into pending. They review them and after they've decided what to keep, they just tag it as draft and then somebody else comes in and schedules them uh, at the location. But that's just because that's the way they wanted to set it up. Ultimately, it can come in, it can be fully automated if you trust it, but I don't trust it uh, because it can pull in things that are making negative comments about something that you disagree with. Um, but anyway, you push the button, it goes out to unlimited numbers of social media accounts, and then it goes into different newsletters. In this case, we gave example of external and internal. Um, and it publishes as a post on your Facebook, on your WordPress site. So with the push of one button, you're extending advertising information out to possibly thousands of sites and hundreds of newsletters for people that subscribe to specific content. So again, just using that, say, CRRetail.com, uh, suppose I have some people that are interested in, in uh, things for campers and truck campers and overlanding. And I have other materials that are interested in, you know, more interesting to people who are doing hiking. When they subscribe to my newsletter, they can choose, are you interested in hiking? Are you interested in overlanding in a vehicle, uh, you know, camping in trailers, whatever it might be. When this content comes in and gets filtered and tagged, it's only going out to the people that expressed interest in it. So you can set up a marketing system like this, but again, the core is your WordPress site. The rest of this is just per peripheral parts of the system that are modular and can be added or removed at any time, including the platforms that we're talking about. So let me look at uh, where I had, okay, we don't need that. We don't need that. We don't need that. These are our mail systems. So I'm going to go to, and sorry, I thought, I think I, here we go. So. This is what I was looking for. And this is, uh, this is again, this is the bakersfieldrecycles.com. It's just a random domain I used for our, our tech class uh, development. But if I were to log in on this, it's, it's very simple. 
um, I would go to, let's see, the, everybody will have a login link. It could be different for each one, but I would just go to that login link. And this is why I always uh, preload things, especially with all these tabs up. But you can see what happened when I first came in. Now I have LearnPress in here. This is, you can sell courses in LearnPress. That's what that's for. So you can see it would give me my total. This site's mostly offline. We're not really using this, but that gives you an idea of where you can see your stats. There are also uh, WordPress dashboards that you can add, or I'm sorry, WooCommerce. But I mostly just want to show you how once you log in, and uh, this one is a multi-site. So how I mentioned, you know, different students can set up different sites. So here's a cooking site, business services, education, pottery. These were just uh, random sites that people were setting up in the class to show examples. This is one WordPress installation. So one of the things I mentioned earlier that's important is with marketing and search engine optimization, um, that is really a core part of getting your information spread everywhere. So what you can do, instead of setting up one WordPress site, let's say, again, using CR Retail, that has all these items listening to all outdoors and then trying to compete with, say, a um, REI or one of the big sporting goods chains, what I can do instead is set up a multi-site and in a multi-site I can with one button click I can add a new site and it'll put in a theme and everything for me and then I can publish in one place and have it go to all these sites too so what I can do instead of having a broad site that covers all outdoors or you know instead I can have a site that focuses just on water bottles and it can be called um, californiawaterbottles.com and then in that site, I do all my search engine optimization around water bottles. Then I add a second site, which seriously takes five minutes. You you go into this system here, and then um, well, here I go again loading things. I get excited. <laughs> so you can see to add new, all I'd have to do is click add new. Then within a couple of minutes, you can see all the people that have created sites on this system um, for our classes. And so I can click add new and create a site in five minutes. And now that one is my sleeping bag site. So I optimize that one for cold weather sleeping bags. And I do all my search engine optimization around that. And that way, instead of having one site that's very broad, where I'm competing with a bunch of these big box stores and people with million dollar advertising budgets, I've got a specialized site for every single one of my product lines. So I might not be able to compete with REI on a broad range of things, but I have one site focused on just water bottles, uh, but it's got hundreds of water bottles on it and all of the optimization done for that. If somebody goes to search on water bottles, I will come up ahead of REI and that's what you want. So you could use a WordPress system like this, install it as a multi-site, add a different uh, site for each product line, and then specialize the, do the search engine optimization for that specific product line within the site, now you've got a good shot at it. And then again, if we go back into one specific site, so I'll go in here and say, this is our main development site, I'll go into the dashboard. And so here's WooCommerce. So if I come down here to WooCommerce, you can see I can track orders, customers, I could set up coupons, reports, change all my settings, status, uh, add extensions, and let's see what happens here. It might give me a little directory. Yeah, so here are a bunch of different things you can add. Here's uh, subscriptions and some of this stuff they charge for, like bookings, memberships. But guess what? Because it's open source, there are also free tools that other people have written that I can use instead of their paid tools that do the exact same thing. So rather than using exactly what they want to sell me, and this is how WooCommerce makes their money. They give you the main tools for free, and then they charge you for a bunch of these add-ons. But you can go get similar add-ons for no charge uh, and add them to your site, and other people can write them, and WooCommerce won't stop them. Um, so that's where you've got home orders, et cetera. Here are products. So I don't think we have any products set up in here yet, but let's see. Uh, just a couple different examples of things. But if I wanted to, it's this simple. So you can see I haven't written any code. Um, if I want to add a new product, I just click Add New. 
I type in the product name, type in the description of the product. Down here, I can pick the type. So you've got simple group external affiliate product, variable product. So like if you had something with uh, different shirt sizes or colors because you're selling a shirt, you can have virtual or downloadable. And then each of those uh, products you can put uh, different specifications into. So for a simple product, this is just general. Here's your price, your sale price. Is it taxable? What tax class? You can track your inventory. Uh, and this even works with Square now. So let's say that you're out in the, the old world where we could go to, you know, say festivals or trade shows or something like that. And you have Square on your phone and you have limited inventory. When somebody swipes that through the Square, uh, or I think it's called Square. Yeah, the one where you have a little device that goes on your phone and you can take credit card payments over your phone out in the field. It'll subtract those purchased products from your inventory here on your website. So it'll tell you when to stock up, you know, enable stock management product levels. You can set up all your shipping terms, um, linked products. So for upsells and cross sells, if somebody buys that nice hat, do I also want to try to sell them some mittens and socks or what else goes with that? Attributes. So here you could uh, create attributes like sizes and colors and give those options. Um, purchase notes menus, enable reviews. So you can see all these things are included in WordPress. I didn't pay a penny for anything you see here. So this entire platform was totally free. And I use a virtual private server. I've actually got like 10 of them. And uh, I can put like 150 sites on each server. Uh, but if you just get one regular hosting account for that $10 a month price range, you can put in a multi-site and have unlimited websites all on one hosting platform for that ten dollars a month and they don't even have to be you know where i talked about uh breaking it down by different product lines and focusing on that uh, you don't even have to do that you can have one site that's your main company site and then you can have other sites that are focused on retail that have nothing to do with your main company site you know maybe one's a little side project or something but they won't know the difference and you can use all your own domains uh, for those as well so that's this is a quick inside view you could put uh, product tags over here. You can upload your product image. So I can uh, say select here and pull anything out of the media library as my image. And I don't know where all these came from, probably from uh, some of the platforms that we put in. But and then, okay, so it's not optimized, but you get the idea. And then you can put in different gallery images down here. So maybe I have 10 different images of different angles looking at a product and a spec sheet or something like that. You can put in as many images as you like. And these are all the kinds of things that can be charged as add-ons uh, from somebody else. And this Yoast SEO tool is also free. It stands for Search Engine Optimization. And what I can do there, and I'm just clicking the little tab to open it up, I could talk about my key phrases. So my focus key phrase might be, you know, warm winter wool socks for those high Sierra outings. And I want, if somebody types warm socks for high Sierra or warm socks for winter, you know, I, I can put in those uh, terms and optimize for that. And that'll help me get up higher in the search engine optimization game. And this is all done for you. You can see you get guided and they'll even give you scores. So it'll give you scores on flesh reading ease, uh, which is a, a standard to measure how difficult things are to read. Um, it, you know what I mean? It, it coaches you so that you do the right things on SEO. SEO alone, um, I know people or companies that are paying a few thousand dollars a week uh, for an SEO consultant to just come in and do this for them. But all they would really have to do is put in Yoast SEO and Yoast SEO will walk them right through it. Okay, uh, I'm gonna speed up a little bit here because we're getting short on time and I have a lot of other things I'd, I'd like to cover. Um, but so quickly, you can go to uh, go to eBay to get your, you know, or I'm sorry, uh, YouTube and search for any of the different things we're talking about, including Shopify and others to get tutorials. Uh, think about your whole system comprehensively, not as a single piece at a time. So everything from your source materials for advertising and promotion and a key for this 
remember, let's say we start a group on Facebook that's focused. I'll just use recycling here because that's what this is about. Uh, we don't want to send them, you know, every single post we make by our recycling services. We can do this for your recycling company. We want to put up things of interest to them. So say there's changing recycling legislation pending in California or a new type of technology that's going to advance recycling or new types of materials that are going to reduce waste that even goes into the system, um, new reusable options, anything like that. Feed them stuff they want to read and make that the majority of your posting content and then just throw a pitch in there for your services once in a while because nobody wants to sit and just watch an ad all day, but just like television, They'll watch 10 minutes of entertainment and then three minutes of ads and then 10 minutes of entertainment and three minutes of ads. Then television has it down. So you can even look at the timing and ratios they use. Uh, but that's the point. So get them content they want to see. Put your own advertising into that when you can and then distribute it to the right markets and do it in efficient, effectively as possible. And you can set this whole thing, whole type of system up yourself in WordPress without using our tools, uh, just using different plugins that all work together to accomplish this same thing. Uh, MailPoet is good for sending out mail. If you're a smaller company, up to 2,000, I believe, is free. And with one organization, we have a couple different campaigns, uh, but they didn't want to, and they have about 6,000 people on their mailing list, but they happen to be three different campaigns. So what we did was set up three free MailPoet sites. Uh, and look at this, right in MailPoet, they're talking about WooCommerce. So even MailPoet recognizes that WooCommerce is a great tool and they want to integrate with it. So they're talking about best email plugin for WordPress. So you can set up a subscription page on your WordPress site where people come in and um, and, and, advert and uh, subscribe and then you get the, your mail letter with it. And uh, MailPoet, I'm sorry, um, MailPoet is, I was thinking MailChimp. Uh, MailPoet, you can do a lot more with it for a lot less money. So for $200 a year, you can have unlimited subscribers and unlimited uh, email. Whereas here's uh, Constant Contact. If you look at their pricing, email marketing. And they offer some e-commerce tools as well. So it's worth uh, looking into that just to learn from them. But you can see what they charge for email. And then it goes up quite a bit based on how many people you have subscribing. So if you have, say, 10,000 people, uh, you're probably paying a couple hundred bucks a month at least. Then MailChimp is the, the other one I alluded to, except all cookies. You can see what their pricing is. Uh, this one also integrates into WordPress. So people can come and subscribe to your different MailChimp lists through your WordPress site. And the same thing with Constant Contact. You can integrate that into WordPress and uh, cover it. Now, one of the uh, most important things that we haven't covered yet that I want to make sure we get to is this uh, spreadsheet that we developed for site monetization. So I'm going to quickly go through these and we'll leave some time for questions. But let me take a look. A couple more have come in here. Um, okay, Is there a summary at the end? I have to sign off very soon. We will provide the recording to you. No problem. Uh, do you have a hosting platform you recommend? Um, I hate to make recommendations because my my uh, standards for choice are probably different than yours. For me, most of my clients are in the sustainability field. So I like to make sure that I'm using a sustainable hosting platform that provides also the technical tools that I need. And I like having access to the server and being able to do all that stuff myself so I could go in and set up my own software on the server and manage it myself and set up my uh, just all the different parameters for PHP and my SQL and be able to add code for Python. So what I'm looking for in a host is probably different than what you're looking for in a host. Um, there, are, there are dozens and dozens of them out there that provide decent hosting. Um, ones that I tend to stay away from, and I don't mean to knock them, it's just the customers I've worked with that have had the most problems with them are using like the the hosting that comes with like GoDaddy or one of the domain registration services that started selling hosting as an add-on product. Um, but there are a bunch of them out there. Um, I like Green Geeks. Again, they're California based. They use 300% uh, wind energy offsets, pretty reliable. 
uh, and you can get access at different levels for everything. But back to this uh, monetization uh, spreadsheet. These are all the different types of things we've talked about, and a lot of them can be done all in one website. So here are affiliate programs. Uh, you can do Amazon, like we talked about. One example is this Ken Rockwell photography reviews. What he does is he does a review of photography equipment that are really good reviews. He's totally objective about them. He'll compare a couple different cameras or lenses or something like that. And he writes the reviews, and then he puts links in to his Amazon affiliate account for all those products. So when you read about it, and he's upfront about it, he says, hey, you know, I do this because I know it's a good service to the photography community. Um, and if you're thinking about buying one, please click this link and I'll earn a small commission. It won't cost you anything. So he doesn't try to hide that. He's pretty upfront, which is cool. Uh, you can also have job boards. So again, if you specialize in a particular field, you can uh, feed in jobs from like Indeed or Simply Hired or Career Builder. And when somebody clicks on those jobs, you get a commission, even if they just look at the ad. Um, this is one I don't want to promote, but it's just an example. And I don't want to promote it because I own part of this company. Um, but anyway, this is a, an affiliate program for an education site where you can become an affiliate. And I want to talk about that because that's also directly related to how you sell. Uh, but we'll get to that in a second. But you can become an affiliate. And if you were to advertise any of the courses from greeneducation.us on your site and somebody takes the class and pays, you get a commission. Uh, you can join affiliate networks like CJ Affiliate. Uh, what is affiliate marketing, and even sell things from like Home Depot. So if you look at uh, look at what this tool is about, but I'll just go here to show you an example. Oh, wrong, wrong sell. So you can join a Home Depot affiliate program. So how many of you you know even knew that you could do that? Uh, but you can set up your own website, join the affiliate program, and sell Home Depot products on your website. So look through these, a lot of different options. There's an iTunes affiliate program, eBay partner network. Uh, you've probably all heard of Rocketton lately. They, one of the stadiums is named after them now in the Bay Area, used by Macy's, Starbucks. And if you go here to their link, you'll see you can sign up and then you can start selling products that are sold at Macy's and Starbucks and you get a commission on your website. While you're doing that, you can also do advertising. So you could charge people to pay ad, put ads up on your site, use Google AdSense, uh, paid directory listings. So in WordPress, you could put up a business directory, a consultant's directory, something like that. There are book affiliate programs, though I think Abe got bought by Amazon. Property listings for real estate, uh, domain cash parking. That's not really very valuable, but if you have a bunch of domains registered and you're not using them, you can do what's domain cash parking. And when somebody searches and lands on one, they get fed a bunch of ads, but then you get a uh, you get a commission from that. Paid newsletter subscriptions, paid members only content, and then of course direct e-commerce, like we talked about, where you can get paid electronic downloads, uh, art, music, eBooks, documents, uh, physical products. But again, it's all about the marketing, and content is king. So you need to drive traffic to your website using social media outreach and advertising, social media integration with website and advertising, like the system I just showed you, uh, focus on user experience and user interface to make sure that it's appealing and easy for people to use, use search engine optimization, and here's where you can get to Google's uh, Keyword Planner. And again, they use that to sell, so you'll buy ads through them, but you can use their Keyword Planner and then not buy the ad. That's totally legit. So use their keyword planner to find the best words for your website and your blog posts, uh, but just don't pay them. Take that and put it into your site instead. Um, make sure your site loads fast. These are a couple of examples, why slow and Google page speed that will analyze your site. Make sure it's secure. Uh, do analytics so you know what you're getting and what's happening and you can follow the path people travel through your site and use Google Search Console, which used to be called uh, Google Webmaster Tools. And what you do is in WordPress, you can add a plugin. It creates a sitemap. You log in on this, again, another free Google tool, and you put that sitemap into search uh, tools. And now it, it, it crawls your site 
and it knows the keywords that you've set up that you want to sell on. So one thing I want to make sure I don't miss is also affiliate program. So if we were to go back here to, let's see, here are these plugins, and I just search affiliate. So there are ways that you become an affiliate for somebody, say Amazon, and you sell some, and you sell something that's an Amazon product. Amazon pays you a commission. You can do that with other people. So if you look at something like this, affiliates manager, affiliates, um, affiliate link manager, what you can do there is you can have people that are affiliates for you. So there's a system here, and I think it's this one, but I'm not certain. Uh, you can tell when you when you look at it or put it in. That what it does is say I have a site and I'm selling things on it. And I've got a friend that's just always oh, out there on Instagram, traveling around the world, getting a lot of photos taken, gets a lot of followers. I can make them an affiliate of me of mine, where they put links on their website or their posts. And if somebody clicks and buys through my website, that all gets tracked. And at the end of the month, um, they'll automatically get paid. Well, not even the end of the month. You can do it on a cash in basis. So when I get paid, after I've been paid at the end of the month for everything I've been paid for, then they'll automatically get a deposit for a percentage, say 10% or something like that, into their PayPal account. So now you can turn all your friends into your sales team or your business colleagues or anybody else that wants to participate. They get a little bit of a commission for promoting your products, but you're not the only one out there selling it and pushing it. And uh, that's what you can do with these affiliate programs. So we are at 11.58, <laughs> so I think, let me check uh, the question box here. Um, I'm not seeing any more questions come in at the time. So I'll stay on for another minute or two that we've got. Uh, but the most important thing for you all to remember again is come back to this website, um, not the California Capital site itself, but the link that I sent out earlier Let's see if I still have it up here. Yeah, so bakersfieldrecycles.com. That's the site you want to remember. And on our uh, on our homepage there for that site is where you're going to find all of our course materials. And I also will be adding this recording to the uh, to the uh, California Capital main site. I'm not sure exactly where yet. I want to coordinate that with Sarah. Uh, but most likely, it's going to be over here under workshops and events, uh, possibly under Entrepreneur Education Program. And uh, the last session we did was on uh, cybersecurity. I'll be adding that one as well. So these, uh, all these materials will be available for you going forward. And uh, feel free to contact me at any time if you got any questions. Oh, and somebody just said. Uh, Please provide contact info. Okay, so I will do that now. I'm going to give you my email address. Second, let me get a box over here. Well, actually, I'm going to put that. I'll put that on our website or uh, on one of these other resources so that you have it available. Uh, that would be better if I do it now. Then I think. Well, I guess it will hurt here. I have a couple of email addresses. I'm going to use this one. Okay, so you should, uh, you're going to get an email in a second here with my email. Um, okay, there's my email. If you don't hear back from me uh, reasonably quickly, the best thing to do is text me. Then uh, tell me who you are when you text in case you're not in my contacts. Then I just sent that number as well. Uh, I, I honestly, I get like a thousand emails a day. Like that's not even an exaggeration. And I have a lot of them filtered and a lot of those that I wish I could see uh, get missed because of filters and things like that. But if you text me, I'm pretty quick to respond. I don't give that number out to uh, a lot of people. So I think that uh, wraps it up. We're right at 12. See if there are any more questions in. Seeing none, I make a motion to adjourn. Thank you all for being here. Uh, good luck in your adventures. And let me know if I can ever help you with anything. I should have the recording up. Um, let's see. 
Well, probably by tomorrow, but I'm going to say Monday just to give myself a buffer. And I hope you all have a good weekend. Stay safe out there. And let's hope the uh, world returns to normal at some point soon for, for all of us and for our, our friends in retail. Take care.